Hello everyone, welcome to the London Club. In this video, which we're gonna take a look at the etiquette mistakes that tend to be made by new golfers. That's fair to say the word etiquette is fairly old fashioned. What we're really talking about here are the things you need to do and things you need to avoid in order to be considerate of those around you. Now, we're gonna list out some of the mistakes. And these are all things I think it's fair to say that myself included, many golfers have made. But if you're new to the game, you're definitely more likely to make them. So let's head out to the golf course here at the London Club get started. Being ready to play when it's your turn is absolutely crucial. It's one of those things that help keeps the pace of play going. So make sure that you've done all of your prep to play while somebody else is hitting. So understanding what the wind's doing, how far you've got, all of those things, you should be making those calculations while others are playing so that when it's your turn to go, club in hand, ready to go. Uh, it's those simple things that can really help speed up the game of golf and everyone will be grateful for that. So we're on the putting green and this is where the ball is rolling along the ground rather than flying through the air. So it's important just to give a little bit of consideration to where your playing companions are going to be putting from. Uh, and do not walk across their line because yes, this time of year, firm surfaces, it's probably not going to make a lot of difference. I would say what, what happened just in this video, no difference whatsoever. No. But in, in wetter conditions, it could make a bit of a difference. Yeah. And it's one of those things that over time, you just learn not to walk along the line of your playing partner's putts. Yeah, or across it even. Yeah. So you're, you're unlikely to walk straight up and down it, but you might just absentmindedly wander across. So just be aware of where the other people in your group are going to be putting from and stay well clear of that line. Okay, so I've tapped in, we've finished the hole, we're now ready to go to the next hole. But you'll see that there is one bag on the left of the green, my bag over by the camera. The green to next tee route is that way. If I'd left my bag where Neil's is, we'd be leaving this green a lot quicker and the people up on the hill they're waiting to play in would be able to do so much more quickly. As it is, I've now got to walk an extra 30 yards twice and then all the way back across the green and that can be infuriating to watch from up on the hill there. If you know the course reasonably well, you know where you're going to need to leave your bag, try and leave it at the point where you're going to be exiting that green, so once you've tapped in, you can be away as quickly as possible. And one other thing, you'll, you'll see this quite a lot with uh, relatively new golfers, they'll have a chip shot from over there, they'll have their bag over there, they're obviously going to have to have a putt after the chip shot, almost certainly, but they will go over there with the wedge. They won't take the putter with them, so then they'll have to go all the way back to the bag to get the putter to then make the putt. Uh, as long as it's not tipping it down, there's absolutely no reason why you can't take both clubs over there with you. Rest one gently down, play the chip, and then you haven't got to do another 70 yard round trip to get the putter. Okay, so this is one that I'd say used to happen an awful lot when I was a junior golfer, but happens a bit less now, but is well worth knowing. And that is that if you are a group on the golf course that's a little bit slower and you've got a faster group behind you, you should let them through, Jez. Definitely, especially if the course ahead is clear and you know, you've effectively lost ground on the other players ahead of you, um, just move aside, let them through. And I think a lot, of, a lot of newer golfers are actually quite good at this because they, the thought of having people behind them fills them with some sort of dread. They don't want people to see them uh, while they're not that proficient at the game yet. So they're happy to let people through. Others are maybe not quite aware of what's going on behind them. Exactly. So always a good idea to try and keep play moving as quickly as you can. But if you are a bit slower than the group behind, think about letting them go. That, I reckon... Get over, get over. That's wet. It's wet. No, halfway across. <sighs> oh, I think that's the wrong club. Oh, sorry, Jess. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's all right. So as golfers, I think at times we can be a little bit oversensitive to noise, Jez. What would you say? I think that's true. I think people would say, you know, footballers play in a cauldron of noise all the time. But <laughs> yeah. in football, you're reacting to where the ball's going. In golf, you're trying to get yourself in the right mindset to 
to hit the shot. So it's up to you when you start and if yeah. there's stuff that's distracting you. It's also a constant noise in a football stadium. Well, that's true. On a golf course, it's quiet. And then if suddenly, I'm thinking if you jangle your clubs or you, you're rummaging around looking for a ball or a tee in your golf bag at the wrong moment, it can really be off-putting. So it's just a word of advice. If you're a beginner looking to get into the game, just be careful about the noise that you're making. Make sure you don't do it when somebody's just starting to take the club back. It could really put them off. Oh, stay there, stay there. I lost it. You see it in the sun? Sorry, see where that went? I was, um, I was just sorting the scorecard out. I wasn't really Sort's watching. Scorecard out. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So here's a scenario where you just need to be aware of what's going on around you. We're playing into the sun. It's never easy to follow the ball into the sun, even harder when you've just hit it and your head is still coming up after the shot. So you're hoping that someone in your group is going to be, everyone in your group is going to be following that ball as closely as they can. So if one or two people are not watching and you've hit it a little bit wide, your chances of finding it are going to be greatly reduced. It's very so, demoralising that. Actually. Yeah, it, is, it can be very demoralising. So just a little bit of courtesy and consideration. Uh, you'd want someone to try and follow the flight of your ball, so it's only right that you should also try and follow the flight of your playing companion's balls. OK, so playing golf outside, you're often going to have shadows, and this is about being aware of where your shadow is and what it's doing just as somebody's about to play. So even if your shadow isn't over the ball, of your playing partner. If it's somewhere near and then you go and scratch your head, that can be really off-putting, can't yeah, it, Yeah, it can definitely. And uh, you know, not just on the green, it might be the end of the day, the shadows are getting long and you're all around the tee area and you've just got to be aware of where your shadow is because, again, you know, you might say we're being oversensitive, but just that little visual distraction can be enough to just throw someone. Bad shot at the wrong time and suddenly uh, you're not talking to each other, which is a little bit unnecessary. So just be aware of what your shadow is doing. So there you have it, that's our look at the most common etiquette mistakes. Now these are all things that as golfers we all make these mistakes from time to time but it's fair to say that you are more likely to make them if you just started out. Hopefully this video will highlight what they are and help you avoid them next time you're out on the golf course and ensure that you're a real joy to play with. Uh, but that's it for now from the London Club, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.